Hello and welcome back to part 6 in my Snowman Survivor top-down tutorial series. In this part, we'll be having the enemies react to the bullets hitting them and spawn in coins when they get destroyed. So let's just head straight over to our enemy prefab that we have, our enemy scene, and let's just work out how we're going to do this. So we have a collision shape so that they bump into each other, but what we also want to add is some sort of detector for when the bullets hit it. So let's just add a child node on top of our enemy and make this an area 2D. We use this for the bullet as well. Um, it's a really great way to be able to detect the collisions. You'll see it's complaining because we don't have a shape for this area 2D. So I'm going to add a child node of collision shape 2D and then over on the right I'm just going to choose the collision shape. Now it really doesn't matter what collision shape so I'm just going to use a big circle and this is going to basically be the collision shape that detects whether the bullet hits it so it's not actually going to be colliding with any other objects. And the only thing I would like to do is just change the name of this. I'm just going to call this um, hitbox even though it's a circle. So make sure the uh, enemy is saved and then what we need to do is we need to look at this hitbox um, over in the the node over here. The hitbox has a bunch of signals that you can hook into and um, have your code run um, based on these events or signals. Now uh, if it was a body that was going to be entering, if we were expecting a body to be entered, i.e. another um, another object like a rigid body or a character body, then you would use this body entered. But what we're expecting is to be able to detect whether the bullet comes in. If you remember from earlier, the bullet is in fact an area. So we can look for this area entered signal. Um, this emits true when the uh, received area enters this area. So it will pass the area that comes in so we can just check whether that is actually a bullet. So let's connect this up to our main enemy. So click on connect again and then we'll just choose the enemy because it's already there. And because we changed the name to hitbox, we've got a signal, a receiver method, sorry, called on hitbox area entered. And we'll click connect and it'll pop it up straight into our enemy script. Um, it's always a good idea to kind of like write some debug code to see what's happening. So when we run this function, um, or when this function is run for us, um, we'll have this area value right here that is another area 2D. So what we can do is we can actually just um, print something out. So we can look at the the area 2D that's passed to it and we can say dot name. So we can actually print out the name of the area 2D that goes into it. When we run this code, what you'll find is that when another, um, when an area 2D goes in, you can see all these, these values, this area 2D number 58 and number 63. What these are is um, effectively, these are the bullets. Because we're spawning bullets in, we don't have a specific name for these bullets, so we don't know what they are. So in order to detect whether it's a bullet, we're going to need to have another solution to that. The good news is the solution is very simple. If we go back to our bullet over here, this bullet has um, a script on it and um, the script just does the basics of moving. But what we can do is we can use this cool thing called class name, where we can give the uh, script a particular class name and then we can check for that class name when we uh, are in another piece of script. So if I just type in class name bullet, that means that all these area 2Ds, all these bullets will have a class name of bullet. Why that helps us is inside the enemy, when we have this hitbox area entered, we can see if that bullet, this area that enters us, is actually a bullet. So we can just say it like this. We can say if area is bullet. Um, and then we can print um, something like hit by bullet. That way we can test to see that this actually works. Now running this, um, we could see the message hit by bullet over here every time we have um, one of our snowmen hit by one of our bullets. And effectively all we want to do, um, to begin with anyway, is we'll just uh, delete this object. So we'll, um, running Q3, uh, we'll free the object that this script is on. So it's on the enemy, so it's going to free the enemy and the enemy snowman should disappear. We should probably also delete the enemy bullet as well. And because we're inside this if statement, so we're in this tab here, um, we can basically say that we want to, uh, for the area, we can queue free as well. So the area is obviously the bullet. We've checked to see it's a bullet, so we know it's a bullet, so we can queue free it. 
running this code now, what you'll see is that the snowmen, when they get hit by a bullet, will actually disappear, and the bullet disappears too. So we're able to actually kill the snowmen now. However, that is not all. We also want to spawn some sort of coin or gold or something like that when the player is killed. So I'm going to do that by creating a brand new scene for that. Um, it's going to be an area 2D again because I know down the line I'm going to want to be able to detect collisions on this coin. Um, we'll call it gold. Um, so the it should be pretty simple. It should be pretty should be getting quite used to this now. We're going to need some visual representation, so we're going to need a sprite. I'm going to click on the sprite and choose the sprite that I want. I'm going to uh, load up from the Kenny Asset Packs and the PNG. I saw one that looked a wee bit like a like a gem type thing, so that'll do. Um, we'll use that for now. You could obviously draw your own if you wanted to. The gold's still complaining. The Area 2D needs a collision shape 2D. And I'm going to view this in 2D because I'm not sure how big it needs to be. Um, actually, I do probably want this sprite to be half the size. So um, back to scale of 0 0.5. We did that for everything else in the game. So we'll do it for this too. The collision shape 2D, I'm going to set the shape to be a circle shape and just make that big enough to kind of like encompass the whole thing. I'm going to save that right now, um, making sure that it's in the scenes and it's called gold.tscn. That is fine. I just need to remember that for later on. And now we have something that the enemies can spawn in when they die. I'm going to keep things simple and do it the easiest possible way right now. So um, on, on the enemy here, we have this um, hitbox and we have the enemy script. The enemy detects that a bullet has hit it. And then at this point in code right here, this is when it kills itself. So this is where we want to spawn in that um, that gold. So I'm going to need a reference to that gold to be able to instantiate it. So I'm just going to do it the, the easiest way. It's maybe not the most um, flexible way, but I'm going to say var gold prefab prefab equals and then use the preload function to load up the gold scene just like this. That gives me a reference to this so we can spawn it in. Down here, before we've queued free, in fact, I'm not going to use this print statement anymore. Um, I'm just going to spawn the gold right here. So all I need to do is create a new variable to hold my new gold once I've instantiated it in. And then we'll say it's equal to the uh, gold prefab dot instantiate. And that will make a new instance of the gold prefab. Importantly, we're going to have to position it. So we're going to have to say gold dot position. It's equal to the global position of this um, object that we're just about to destroy. So that'll put it in the right place. I don't think we need to set anything else that should actually do it, but we do need to add it as a child. Now one little tip here, one little trick or problem potentially is if we add it as a child, if we do a standard add child right here, and then we queue free this object, the children get destroyed as well. So we definitely can't do this. Now previously when we did the bullets, we um, we used this function get tree to find the um, main tree and then we find the root object of it and then we can add the child um, to that object and we're gonna add that new gold that we just made. So that just adds it in as a child of the root of this scene rather than as a child of this object because that wouldn't work, because we're deleting it. And there we have it. If you test this now, what you'll find is that every single one of the um, times that the snowman is killed, the gold, um, the pink thing, whatever it is, gets spawned in. Now you'll notice down in the bottom there's um, this minor issue. I did a little bit of Googling, and um, basically it's because we're adding something in and then immediately destroying something. It's got some issues. It still works. It's not going to be a problem. There is a solution. Um, if you'd like to see. So the, the main solution is basically to use more or less the same uh, thing that we did. But um, rather than doing the root, we need to call deferred, which means um, call it uh, call it a little bit later. And then we use the add child function and then we pass in the gold as the parameter. So it's uh, ugly and horrible, but it does get rid of the bug. Um, it's effectively doing the same thing. It's just doing a frame later rather than doing it just as we're about to destroy an object. 
So that's the entire um, video. I've kept this one nice and short and hopefully it's been pretty good. We'll move on in the next one to uh, having the player die as well when they get hit by the snowmen. So I hope you're enjoying the series and stay tuned for the next one.